it's been a year. Um, you know, hello, my name is Jonas. Welcome. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I have I hope you've been busy the last year, uh, you know, building side projects, building super fast websites, having fun. And, you know, we've uh, also certainly been very busy having a lot of fun. <laughs> um, and I want to talk to you about that. Um, you know, the one feature I'm really excited to talk to you about uh, is certainly like um, mobile support for Tauri. So if you are saying, you know, like, what in the world is Tauri? Like, never heard of it. The idea is very simple, right? You know how to build websites and you also really want to build apps as well. You know, so why not just use your website building skills to build apps as well? Now, that idea is not super new, but what Tauri brings to the, to the table, you know, the thing we do differently is Tauri built from scratch in Rust for maximum performance, for maximum security. And instead of, you know, shipping a full browser every time, you know, shipping a full copy of a browser every time, we make use of the operating system web view. Now, that is a different set of trade-offs, you know, nothing is perfect you will have to then, you know, support different versions and different web views. And, you know, on Safari, it's WebKit and on uh, Linux, Safari, it's WebKit. Wow. On uh, Mac OS, that's WebKit, so Safari, um, you know, and then Windows, that's Chromium. But honestly, like, that is what we do every day. You know, as web developers, we support the web, right? You know, we build websites for all the browsers out there. So to us, you know, that is not really a problem. And we've been building tools to sort of help with that because the big advantage that that gives us is not only like incredibly false, small file sizes, right? Sort of I'm talking kilobytes, but also it lets us support every operating system that has a web view out of the box, right? And that is certainly cool because we can just also build apps for mobile now, right? So we have been working on desktop support for four years. I can, I will show you that. <laughs> um, but now for the last year and a bit, we've been working on mobile support as well. You know, iOS and Android. And, uh, you know, little secret, you can also get it to work on watchOS, you know, on, on Apple watches. It's really janky and very cursed, but it also works. Um, it's not supported, you know, don't, uh, don't add me on Twitter, don't get upset, but it also works. We might support it down the road, maybe. Enough said about that. Let me show you some code, right? That's what you really hear. Let's dig in. Let me show you how this works. Let me show you. Let me give you proof how cool this is. And for that, we're, we're going to scaffold out a new Tauri app. And we can you know, best do that using our scaffolding utility. Um, create Tauri app. And in this case, you know, we need to say that we want alpha and we also want to support uh, want to scaffold a mobile project and alpha is really because it is alpha right now this is why i'm showing you this you know sneak peek preview this is what's coming to tauri and i want your feedback for it as well right we need your feedback to improve this there are rough edges you know it is more uh, alpha it is a bit janky sometimes but we really want your feedback because you know we think this is kind of cool and we want to make this even cooler so let's scaffold out a project. Ta -da. You have to give it a name. Doesn't really matter. Um, and you know now we can choose between TypeScript and, and JavaScript and Rust. Rust really only because Tauri is built in Rust, and we also you know want to support the Rust community uh, to the best extent that we can. But you know let's go with JavaScript. And I'm just going to choose PNPM. You can also use Yarn. You can also use NPM. Doesn't matter. Um, I'm also not going to choose a choose a framework right now, just you know, for showcasing this. It doesn't really matter. Um, also, no TypeScript, and boom, you know, scaffolded out an app. And now, let's open this, and you can see this might look familiar, right? And we have a package.json, we have a git ignore, you know, and we have a source folder, which this is all our website, you know, HTML has some JavaScript, has some CSS. Cool, you all know that, right? Now, the new part, that is the source Tauri folder, and that is your Rust project. This is the magic that, you know, makes it work. Um, because we sort of piggyback off the Rust compiler to, 
then take your front end and inline it into the binary and make it you know really small and really fast. Um, this is the magic that need that makes it work. But don't worry, you don't need to touch this at all, like at all. You can, and there's sort of ways where you where you can you know like call Rust code straight from JavaScript. You know if you need to do any like heavy processing or cool cool stuff. You can call Rust from JavaScript and you know offload stuff into that um, with like bindings and stuff, but you don't need to at all. Like not at all. You don't need to touch this folder whatsoever, and that's pretty cool. So if we now go ahead and you know clear up all this a bit, and we now say pnpm towery def. Oh, what happened? Oh, <laughs> I'm a moron. Of course, I need to install first. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Um, now, <laughs> you know, and uh, what is happening right now is that now it's compiling our Rust project. It's compiling in development mode. You you know may, may have heard of Rust, uh, the language and its infamous, you know, the long compile times. You know, that's the trade-off you get for the security and the small sizes. Um, so once that's done compiling in a second, you know, any second now. <laughs> um, wow, it opened up our app. Pretty awesome, right? This is a, you know, full app. I can, you know, I can resize it, yada, yada, yada. Um, all of this inside here is our HTML and CSS and JavaScript. And I can even show you an example. For example, if I, you know, I've typed my name now. Um, this is an example of calling Rust code from JavaScript. If I, you know, once I click this button, it's going to take the input of that sort of input field and send it to Rust, and you know the result is this uh, string right here, and it's going to display that. And you know this is not ter terribly interesting. You know, as an example, it's you're not even doing all that much processing, um, not at all really. Um, but this is kind of, you know, as an example that you can actually call Rust from JavaScript, which is pretty neat. Now, old news, boring, right? This is very boring. This this has been, you know, I showcased this last VidCon from, this is not really interesting. What is interesting, however, is mobile support. Whoa. So let's start with iOS. Um, and there's a command you sort of need to run. Uh, it's called Tauri iOS init. And that's really because sort of, you know, development for mobile is a bit more complicated and we need to sort of scaffold out a project uh, for iOS that we then run. You only need to do that once, you know, don't worry. Um, and, you know, it's going to run through a few steps and now it created, a, yeah, here's the gen folder and then Apple and forget about this folder. You don't really need to worry about it. This is like auto generated. Don't touch it. Everything's cool. Um, but it's sort of needed to make it work. Uh, again, you know, alpha uh, development, stuff like that is expected. But now, wow, cool. Now we can run Tauri iOS dev. And in a second, we can select a simulated runner. You know, let's choose iPhone 15. Why not? You know, nine. And you can see it starts up and it's also going to take a while. You know, it's going to boot a whole simulator of an operating system and going to boot the whole phone. Uh, and in the background, you can see it's, you know, it's generating a lot of debug output. Again, this is because it's alpha. We really need that debug output in order to, to be able to understand what it's doing. You know, if it's going wrong, very important to know what, what was happening. Um, you know, and again, as you can see now in the background, it's going to compile our app again. And it's going to compile, but this time for iOS, right? And once that's done, which should be in a second. All right. And there we go. You know, now it's uploading to our simulator. It's also going to take a while, but there we go. Boom. You know, <laughs> we have an app running on our iPhone 15 simulator, granted. But, you know, to show you the same works, you know, it's going to be run the same thing. But cool, the cool thing is this now ran on our iPhone, right? The Rust code runs on our iPhone. That's pretty neat. Um, you know, we can also like 
this is not terribly interesting, uh, terribly interactive, sorry, but you know, we can also rotate and like do all this kind of stuff. Um, very cool. Let me switch that back. Wow, nice. Tauri on iOS, how cool is that, right? Now, iOS, very nice. What about Android, right? What about Android? Does Tauri also support Android? I hear you screaming, you know, like, ah, I hate iOS, you know, give me Android. Okay, let's go. Same thing again, you know, Tauri iOS in it. Call that, and it's gonna, you know, create now the Android project. Again, we can, you know, look into Gen, and then now it has like Android. Again, forget about it, you don't need to touch this at all. And similar to like the uh, iOS simulator we just had, you know, close that down. PMPM Tauri Android Dev. And this again gives us sort of a selection from, from a couple Android emulators. You usually need to set these up in Android Studio. By default, I think you just get the Pixel 3a uh, sort of built in, but then uh, I also created us a Pixel 7 Pro just because I like how that looks a bit more than the Pixel 3a. Now, it's booting up our simulator and, uh, or rather emulator, but you know, this keep sort of state. So you will see this, I showed this uh, to someone else, this demo, it's with uh, you, forget about it in a, mem in a moment. You know, and again, we see a lot of debug output. This is now configuring our app and all that. Once that's done, it's gonna upload to our emulator and then it's gonna refresh. Um, sort of this saving of state just means that you can sort of very quickly jump into your emulator again. So um, if I were to develop this app more, I don't really want to wait this long every time, right? So this is pretty cool. It's sort of caching. But you can see, wow, Tauri on Android. And, you know, same thing, just going to show you how this works. Enter my name and wow, boom. Uh, also Rust code running on the Android device itself. Cool stuff, right? Now, uh, you may ask, when? You know, when is this ready? When can I use it? When can I play with it? And um, the answer is actually really soon, hopefully. As I told you, we need your feedback, and that's because we're going to move this into beta next month. And once it's in beta, you know, we're actually going to do two security audits on the code base, you know, the whole, the full project, make sure no, no security vulnerabilities are to be found. And, you know, once the auditors say, you know, all good, all cool, and you say, you know, feature wise, that's why we really need your feedback. You say feature wise and, you know, experience wise, also all good. Then we're going to move it to stable, which hopefully, you know, going to happen towards the end of the year. Speaking of end of the year, there's uh, also something very cool that has happened actually last year, you know, to the end of the year. And that is we started a company. A uh, whole bunch of core contributors from Tauri came all together and we started, you know, a company called Crab Nebula. Um, and the idea is basically that we realized very early on into the project that we think this take you know on how to build desktop apps and mobile apps <laughs> that is really sort of the way to go we're really happy with that we sort of you know Tauri makes it really easy to build desktop apps and mobile apps for all cr uh, platforms you know cross-platform but now you sort of build you know you build an app it looks really good you spend a lot of time on it but it's on your machine right and so the idea with Crab Nebula what we're building out uh, is that you should be really just, you know, be able to connect your GitHub repo or GitLab or whatever repo up to our service, do a Git push, and that's essentially it, right? We take care of all the rest. We build your app, we update your app, we distribute it, you know, to your website or wherever, to the app stores, we sign it, we take care of all the rest, you know, to make the experience developing apps and then actually distributing them to your users the same as with the web, right? Make it really, really, really easy. And speaking of easy, you know, we also realized that, de you know, debugging websites, really good. There's a lot of cool developer tooling around, right? Like the Chrome DevTools, wow, awesome. I use it on the daily. 
But debugging apps really isn't all that easy right now. And that's why we're also starting a second project uh, or have started it, you know, like working on it away. And that's developer tools for Tauri. And I can't share too much with you about that, but that's also going to hopefully come towards the end of the year. And, you know, stay tuned, subscribe, you know, you can subscribe to my social media, so you can subscribe to our company's social media. You can also subscribe, you know, of course, do that. Subscribe to Tauri's social media accounts. We are on Mastodon and on Twitter to follow along with updates, you know, and we also need feedback from you on all of that. We're going to ask for feedback. We're going to tell you all about it, you know, regular updates. Um, and then towards the end of the year, you know, we have a lot of Christmas presents, uh, Christmas presents. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, you know, as you can probably tell, I'm really excited about this good stuff happening with Tauri. We're really excited to, you know, be supporting the Vite ecosystem as well. You know, going to finish this with uh, saying a lot, you know, big thanks to the organizers of VeetConf. Big thanks that, you know, I can be here with friends talking about all this cool stuff and, um, yeah. Have a great conference. <laughs>